Welcome back to CNBC Africa's special coverage on the municipal elections for 2016. We started the conversation uh, in the last 30 minutes really looking at uh, the social media landscape and we began to touch on some of the celebrity votes uh, and endorsements that were coming through. Edith Gobo, social media manager at CNBC Africa, is with me at the wall now and she's going to be walking us through uh, some of the, the big uh, voters that we've seen uh, going to cast their ballots uh, early today. Uh, in South Africa. Edith, uh, let's turn to your data and uh, hopefully that comes up. What are we seeing? Well, Nazi, this is a tweet from, uh, from Black Coffee um, saying that, you know, Parks is the people's mayor. But Black Coffee has been very vocal throughout the election um, campaign and about, about where he stands. Because real black, the real black coffee, of course, uh, is a, a very big celebrity. He's not just South African, he's international in terms of his exposure. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the conversations we're having earlier with CI and JP is the extent to which uh, there is a, a, a culture of celebrity renting uh, in South Africa. Are we able to tell from these tweets whether this is a genuine tweet coming from black coffee or if it is an endorsement that he's most likely paid to, to do? Well, Nuzi, a lot of people are asking that question, but no one has come up to say whether or not um, Black Coffee and a lot of other um, celebrities have been mm. endorsed by the ANC. A couple of weeks ago, we saw um, a whole lot of Joburg uh, uh, celebrities fill up the um, city hall and tweeting. Mm. I mean, that trend, um, that, that hashtag trended for quite some time with the likes of Jesse Kangosi, um, black coffee, and of course, all the uh, ladies blondie, donned in their in every, their ANC Yeah, if, if everyone was just uh, uh, tweeting um, uh, Sinavalo yeah. for the Let's for the past couple of weeks. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, at my ANC. And as you're saying, uh, fill up Orlando Stadium. We know Casper Nieves for for filling up the dome. So what are we seeing here? Um, well, this, I mean, it was retweeted 611 times and favorited 472 times. This is Casper saying, you know, he's going to vote for the ANC, saying that all black kids should uh, do this. Earlier on this morning, we saw AKA saying uh, him and, and, and Casper don't agree on anything. But if they both tell you to mm. vote for the for the. ANC, then you should How be voting. How significant is this number? 611 ANC. retweets, 472 uh, likes. In the in the broader scheme of things, this is a significant support of what Casper is saying, and this is something that the ANC would like to see. Yeah. Definitely. So let's go to the next board uh, and see what we're seeing here. And again, back to uh, ce to celebrity uh, renting, aka one of the biggest um, mm -hmm. uh, rap artists in South Africa. This is a still image of him, Winnie Mandela, Nom Pendulum Kachwa, and a, a couple of two other people that I don't uh, recognize at first glance. But we also know that they went to Orlando West uh, together today. Correct. Park Star was part of that entourage and went to vote. What are we seeing here? And again, is this uh, AKA just endorsing the ANC or AKA being paid to endorse the ANC? Again, we don't know. No one will ever come out and say if uh, he's, 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 he's just endorsing the, the party or if he's being paid for it. A, um, we've seen him even on a Sunday. He's put out pictures mm. um, from, from the... From the um, Mm. I'm looking at this number now, 78 retweets, 148 likes, and of course, I know that the times are different, but at the, the end of the day, different. we're able to actually tally who had a greater pulling between AKA and Casper to fuel the feud just a little and bit I more. And I think, look, Casper's, Casper has, has more um, engagement on, on Twitter because it's been there for longer. For much longer. This Listen. one... This one is fairly new. Let's um, get on to the next board. So this is fairly new. We're going to keep our eyes uh, on this one. Egg, um, and what are we seeing here? So these are these are s some of these are not for uh, from um, today, but we can see Tembisi here. Mm. We can see uh, Sarafina you know, Lady. <laughs> Sarafina. Um, so these Lele Lele Kumalo, that's these her name. these have been on um, Instagram. These have been on um, Twitter, and these are again. Uh, and again, celebrities vocal 
about and um, back to the point that Sia and uh, JP made Asina Valo that's the hashtag the hashtag Siangoba which is we uh, we are seeing victory again a very famous uh, South Africa vendor artist are also coming through there the final board I think it is that we're going to move on to again uh, quite a number of very famous faces what are we seeing Stimela right yeah okay this is Ray Piri I can't speak for the others but I can definitely speak for for I mean, I mean these the 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 ANC has been running with this for over mm. a, a week. Um, and, and this is quite know, interesting posting. because the ANC has been, has been able to pull um, icons in terms of uh, the entertainment industry. I mean, Ray Piri uh, and his Timelis from the way same back when. Yeah. And at the same time, we're also seeing AKA uh, and Casper Nieveso, all fairly uh, very new artists uh, on the block. Uh, so these are the celebrity endorsements we're seeing. Uh, uh, Edith, thank you so much for your time. That's uh, Edith Nova walking us through uh, the big guns, going to vote and endorsing as their uh, election favorites. Uh, we're going to uh, go back to the desk now, David. Thanks, uh, Noz, and back to JP in Cape Town uh, with his uh, brand's eye methodologies. You know, the one city we haven't talked about today so far in this coverage is Cape Town. Uh, there seems to be an assumption that uh, the DA will retain Cape Town. It has a big majority of votes historically now in uh, both Cape Town and uh, the Western Cape. So what has the social media analysis revealed about that? Is the DA going to be steady, increase its vote, slip back? Uh, how, what are people saying? But it looks like DA is staying pretty steady at the moment. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, they've stayed at about 53%, which is a pretty high number uh, considering the kind of they, them being the incumbent. Uh, we see for the incumbent ANC and all the other provinces, they've taken a big hit, and the DA hasn't taken quite the same hit. Uh, what has been interesting over the past over the past couple of days is seeing a shift from the EFF to the ANC in a conversation. So where the, where the EFF a week ago had kind of 30 percent of positive sentiment in the Western Cape, the ANC over the past two days has kind of reversed that. So they're sitting with about 30 percent of positive sentiment. So it seems like they are campaigning hard to at least grow their their um, pretty small stake of the Western Cape at the moment. Uh, and trying to trying hard to win it back, uh, but it does look, from social media perspective, pretty safe in the DA's hands at the moment. Sia, let's look at the tone of this election and the tone that's coming out of the social media. You know, despite the fact that we've got a lot of tension in this country, and Nazi mm. mentioned earlier the race issues and yeah. so on. Mm. When you look at the election happening itself, almost everywhere one senses it's good humoured. Yes. The parties we had two different party representatives in here; they were laughing and chatting to each other. Yes. It seems like we do underneath all our stresses. Do you have a respect for others, for yes. tolerance for different views, and a kind of determination to make big events like this happen? Yes. What's the tone been on, on the social interaction on the media? People are very steadfast uh, behind the parties that they support. And uh, we were talking about the endorsements earlier from celebrities, but you are almost inclined on social media to endorse whoever you support to represent. So that is why people are coming out, and the, the tonality is very strong, like this is who I am, this is what I stand by. It's almost who you vote for is an extension of who you are. Mm. So um, it is only fair for, for most people to be, yeah, to be very, very, very strong in I, how they believe about I, their I party. I want to just follow up on your celebrity analysis. I, I, I want to ask, are celebrities now under pressure to declare? You know, before they wouldn't yeah. ask them well, which way they're voting. Now it's yeah. like if they're absent from the discourse, maybe they stop being celebrities exactly. if they stay out of the politics. Yeah, they can't be left out of the conversation. I mean, it wouldn't make sense for them to. So. Yeah, so it's, it's, I mean, in terms of the whole getting paid for it or not, um, that information, that's the point of it. Mm. Uh, if, even if you pay, like, the, the point of it is for it not to be found out. Mm. We just have to think about, does it make sense? Yeah. Mm. JP, I, I want to come back to you because we've been talking to, for, for, to a large extent just around uh, social media, but to concentrating the conversation on Twitter mostly. If we, if we begin to look at the other social media platforms, where do we see a uh, conversation also taking place? I mean, is the Facebook conversation as robust as what we're seeing on Twitter? I've also seen that uh, parties like the DA and the ANC have invested heavily in Mixit as an alternative platform to get young people uh, into the polling stations has makes it delivered uh, as an electioneering uh, platform for these parties 
Uh, Mixit is still a private platform to a large degree, so you have to belong to a group within Mixit to be able to, to kind of take part in that conversation. And Mixit as a platform doesn't open that up publicly. So it's, it's not a platform that we, that we track. If I look at just across the South African landscape, we, we do track any public platform. We're seeing 50% uh, of the conversation come from Twitter and 45% of the conversation come from Facebook and just 2.8% of the conversation coming from Instagram. And that's pretty much the whole bundle. There, there are kind of a few beyond that. But I think in, in SA, certainly those are the big platforms that are that be, where people want to go when they want to express an opinion on these things. Uh, so let's maybe uh, go, go back to remind ourselves of uh, the, the election cycle. We remember, of course, that it's held every five years to elect councillors who will be responsible for governing municipalities across the country. Our colleague uh, Zikona Masala uncovered the intricacies of the South African municipal elections and why this year's elections are so highly contested and anticipated. The South African local government elections are upon us, a process that has been underway since the previous national and provincial government elections. Approximately 22,612 voting stations will house millions of South Africans as they cast their votes in a far more intricate voting process than meets the eye. People's sense of satisfaction is to a large extent determined by how uh, their engagement with local government is. Are they being given electricity? Are they being given water? Is the refuse being collected? Is there local protection? And is the place a safe area? All of those things really speak to uh, individual citizens' everyday life. And so local government is fundamentally important in that regard. And often, uh, people's perceptions, their sense of satisfaction in the society as a whole is determined by that local government interaction. So I think it's fundamentally important. This local government election, however, is slightly different. As it's not only important because of that, but it is also important because it really serves as a referendum of the president's tenure in the country as a whole. What you're seeing effectively is if you see what the opposition parties are doing, they've effectively made Jacob Zuma as the centerpiece of their campaign. What they're saying is this is a president who's corrupt, that this is a president who's incapable of getting jobs. He is incapable of uh, establishing the right economic policy. He's too focused on looking after his friends rather than focusing on, 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 on delivering to citizens. And that's the argument. And what they're saying is precisely because of that, you are not getting the kinds of jobs you want. You are not getting the kinds of service delivery services you want. The ANC is saying this is not about that, uh, that the president is not to blame for all of these things. And effectively, depending on who wins, uh, we will see whether this, is a, this has turned out to be a referendum of Jacob Zuma's tenure uh, as president of the ANC, but more importantly, as president of the country. Our democracy is maturing. We are a young democracy. Our democracy is maturing. But we, we do find that, um, you know, election after election, one thing we have been able to do as a nation and not just the Electoral Commission is that we have been able to increase the numbers of people who enroll on the voters' roll. Over 26 million South Africans have registered to vote in this year's municipal elections. What is most impressive, however, is that 80% of those registered are below the age of 35. I'm going to vote on the 3rd of August for a change. I believe that it's very important for young South Africans to, to vote as, as the future leaders and future generation of tomorrow. It's our chance and our only real opportunity to voice what we want and to give the people we believe the power to change and do what we all are looking for. And right now, South Africa is in a, a um, I wouldn't say in a bad place, but we're in sort of a transition phase where we need to start making changes and believing and coming together as one for the better. So I believe that everyone should vote because if you don't, then you can't complain. If you want change to be brought about, there's no, there's no excuse. I mean, the only way you can have a say is to vote. The, f the, the, the strikes, the marches that have been uh, proclaimed by the youth, they are all because of free education that was promised a long time ago. The thing that is more troubling is that most of the country's funds are being misused and corruption. 
one of the things that we're seeing, by the way, not simply in South Africa, but globally, we're seeing that young people are particularly demoralized. Their future is particularly jeopardized. So let me give you an example. What you saw in the UK when Brexit happened is young people voted one way and older people voted the other. Young people feel betrayed by that vote. We're seeing this happen uh, with the fact that unemployment statistics impact on young people in a far more adverse way than it impacts on, on older people. They are saying to us, not just the Electoral Commission, yourselves in the media, the politicians, uh, the whole nation, they're saying, engage with us at the level where we are. And I'm thinking, me, I'm thinking, we are beginning to find each other. We are beginning to engage with them at the level where they want us to engage with them. I think we should uh, continue on that trajectory and we, we are looking forward to a great nation if we do that. Well, that was uh, a pack there put together featuring some of the leading commentators on uh, the election. Looking now at uh, another commentator who has uh, insights into elections and that is uh, Aubrey Machiki. Um, he is one of the most respected commentators uh, and he's a man who has uh, great insight and experience in elections. Let's see what he has to say. Hasn't got that uh, ready yet, so let's uh, get back to... In fact, JP, I want to go back to you uh, in Cape Town. Uh, JP, I think it's time now. We've got a few more minutes with you and Sia on the social media of this election. We've got uh, a few hours to go uh, before the closing of the polls. Now, all that data that you've got through Brands Eye, we want to uh, ask you for a prediction of what is going to be the result for those three big parties in those metropolitan okay, areas wow. perhaps perhaps in those metropolitan areas that you mentioned earlier Port Elizabeth, uh, Nelson Bay, uh, Chwani, Pretoria and Johannesburg the, mo the moment of truth yes well d just to correct something I said earlier on the hashtags we've seen kind of a scene of valor really take off over the past couple of days I looked at it now just in the in the short break and where it was sitting at 200 retweets or, or kind of engagement is now at six and a half thousand which is knocking on the, you know, the vote for change from the DA is only 5,200. So it's similar. So the, the ANC really coming back hard and fighting hard to keep the, the ground that they have fought for very hard over the past 20 years. So look, looking at the prediction, right, so what, what, have, what have we got? In Tswane, it's looking neck and neck between the ANC and the DA, both at 36.5%. There's 0.2 of a percent between the two of them. And so I think that's going to be the one, the one city where uh, we're going to see the ANC lose a, a quite a, a big chunk of their voter base and uh, possibly at the first coalition. As we spoke about on Friday, nothing much has changed on that scenario over the past couple of days. In Nelson Mandela Bay, there, uh, the DA over the past two days has gained another two points. They're sitting at 42.5% and the ANC at 44.5%. Uh, so really kind of pushing hard, I think, to get the last voters over the line and that's probably their best chance just looking at the traditional polls and then also at our data it's uh, the, the DA has done a good job in Nelson Mandela Bay very uh, concentrated and focused campaign to try and move voters I think it's where they've probably seen the most success so that's looking like their best chance from our perspective and then the last one that we spoke about a bit earlier is Johannesburg and from what we're seeing the ANC is still well ahead they're sitting at 40.7% of the of the popular sentiment uh, with the DA at 33 and a half and the EFF at 25 and a half so I, I think there we're still going to see from this data at least while the DA has made kind of good grounds uh, as has the EFF I think uh, the ANC still has a strong a strong support base from what we can see so while social media is still I think fairly in its infancy in South Africa we've seen it come of age in in the likes of Brexit I think what we're going to see here is this is going to show which way the vote is going to move and so that's kind of that's the prediction we're going to stick to. Mm. Uh, JP very interesting predictions and of course a quick reminder uh, to the view of what the numbers look like from the last munic municipal elections uh, in those three highly contested areas Nelson Mandela Bay uh, the ANC coming in at 63 and the DA at 48 so very uh, close uh, to hitting uh, 50 or 51 that's the DA and a quick look at the city of Johannesburg the, the ANC with 153 uh, uh, over the, the, the 260 uh, votes 
and the DA coming in with 90 uh, coming in second there. And the city of Tuane, uh, the ANC at 118 and the DA at 82. So that's certainly uh, going to be interesting. Uh, Sarah, if yeah. we were to use uh, the, the, the social media voices and the sentiments yes. as a gauge of how this election is actually going to unfold, uh, you might not have the, the stats and the data yes. that JP is pulling from, yes. but where does the sentiment seem to be, to be leaning against? Where does the victory seem to be sounding from? Um, just as JP said earlier from what's happening in Tuami, I feel like uh, the NC is going to lose a, a large part of the stranglehold on, on the votes. Uh, I feel like the DA and uh, coupled with the EFF have probably got a few of those votes from them uh, based on and the, what the happenings of the past 18 months surrounding mm -hmm. Zuma. And uh, as much as the ANC is its own party, the only person that we can look, for, look at is Jacob Zuma and how he handles it. So uh, what has been, yeah, so I'm thinking that, yeah, the ANC will mm -hmm. probably lose a few votes, but... Um, and if that happens, which I think is interesting because there have been analysts saying that this particular election, we should be thinking about it almost as a dress rehearsal yes. for 2019. And if we see a shift uh, yeah. in, in voter patterns, those, uh, those shifts are probably going to be even more entrenched when we get to 2019. Yes. So, if the ANC begins to lose some of its power bases uh, on the back of this election, yeah. can we then make the assumption that getting moving mm. towards 2019, that the ANC is likely, mm. unless they, there's a drastic change, to really begin to, to weaken in power? That would be absolutely correct. And I mean, this is the importance of this election. Yeah. It is absolutely pivotal moving forward as to how um, the, the, the parties are going to be uh, hierarchy in terms of the, the ruling. So, yeah, this is a very important election, mm. uh, probably one of the most important since 94. So, because there's so much voice around it, there's so much going on, and uh, this could be another turning point mm. in terms of who's going to be the leading party. So, yeah, looking forward to 2019, um, anything could happen. JP, uh, having asked you to predict the result, uh, when the results do come out, what can we expect on the social media in terms of reaction? I mean, uh, do, does it increase, does it decrease that the result is out? I suppose it's uncharted territory because we've never had this level of social media before uh, and to compare to previous elections. But we could expect to your yeah. analysis of the results response to be as interesting as the analysis of the builder. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there, there are a number of fascinating elements to see as points in the, in the elections at the moment. The, the results is one. You know, will, will some of the metros move? from the ANC, uh, like the Western Cape did a couple of years ago, that's the big one. I, for, for me, the, almost the more interesting result is, wh what is this going to do to the ANC? I think uh, we, we mustn't underestimate just the, the amount of goodwill that the ANC does have in the hearts of South Africans uh, for the battles that they have, have fought in the past. And uh, bringing down apartheid and all of that, the ANC it, is by no means kind of a, a party to be, to be laughed at and uh, what, what this is going if if some of these muni municipalities leave it's going to give the ANC a crisis of identity and they're not a party that plays that out in the public space uh, we see a lot of people that do talk about it in the public space but the inner workings happens behind closed doors so I think unlike Brexit where we saw those conversations happen in the public space after the elections I think here it's going to kind of cause a lot of conversations which we won't see straight away but which will play out over time. And uh, to, to, to see his point, I think 2019 then is going to be very interesting just to see how does the ANC reorganize off the back of what they see happen uh, in the election now. Uh, uh, JP, I, do, I want to stay with you and perhaps to bring in the IEC. I mean, we spent a lot of the conversation looking at the different political parties. The IEC is also being put to the test once again uh, to deliver free and fair elections. Uh, do we have a sense of what the conversation looks like in terms of how they're doing? I, I, don't, I don't have an idea of that at the moment. Uh, we can look at it and I, I think the stories of, of possible corruption or kind of messing with the ballot papers, uh, that, that is a big theme and I know a lot of people have been talking about it. I don't have data on it at the moment, but I think in the sort of post-mortem that we do on Friday, that's certainly something that we should, we should take a deeper dive into.
Just picking up on the ANC uh, reaction to what happens in these polls, yeah. see, uh, good or bad, uh, what strikes one that the ANC does put a lot of emphasis on its historic customs, the ways yes. of doing things, leaders do not present themselves, they emerge and so on. It's a, a, a party in some ways in love with the way it has done things in the past. Yes. Is it sufficiently responsive, good or bad? to the social media do you sense? Do you sense it's in tune? I know there's a lot of tweeting on behalf yeah. of it, yeah. but is it in tune with is the voice of the people? It's indeed, that's a very good question because I feel a lot of people on social media um, think that the ANC is resting on its laurels. Um, they've, they've garnered all this trust and goodwill, like JP said, through what they've done in the past. And um, a lot of what the electioneering campaign did was very different from what the messages, the key messaging that they were using uh, before, because now it just seems it just looks as though it's celebrity endorsed and clothing and celebrities and everything, as as opposed to talking about your actual policies, your your manifesto. What are, what are we voting for? Mm. Now? Because now it seems a bit lost that message in itself. But um, we'll see. I, I really <laughs> it's mm. difficult to yeah. predict. To I mean, yeah. like these these tactics or these strategies are new, especially mm. in elections in South Africa. So it'll be uh, very interesting to see how it, how it pans out. Absolutely, and we've been talking about celebrities uh, and mm. endorsements, David, but we've also forgotten about ministers like uh, Figile and Balula, who have themselves been such strong uh, endorsers tweeters, and yeah. tweeters and right at the forefront Celebrities. Of, oh, it's celebrities yeah. in his own right. We're going to take a short break, uh, but when we come back, we're going to be bringing you more views and in-depth analysis on the South African municipal yeah. elections. And, and a very big thank you to our guests. Yeah, that was J.P. Klopper's uh, in Cape Town, Sia in Johannesburg. Speak.